大家好，我是索头。Again, a huge thanks to all you guys who donated during the premiere and afterwards. We even received international donations from Canada, America, Australia, and Hong Kong as well. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And also a huge thanks to all of you who continue to share our videos with your friends. Well, I can never thank you enough for everything you've done for me. So. Welcome back to part two of Hong Tita Payson Twan, where you guys are the jury and decide if these witnesses you may do Johnny Depp your way here. Danger! And make sure you stick around, because at the end of this video, I'm going to reveal a witness that Johnny Depp could call that some people say will guarantee his victory in this defamation suit. Now, in our last video, we talked about the professional witnesses that Amber called to testify, and in this one, she's calling the personal witnesses. And a strange friend, a couple of freeloaders, and even Johnny Depp's ex Paulio testified, and some of them actually made Johnny Depp look good, in my opinion. So smash that like button and let's begin. Now our first testimony comes from Elizabeth Mars, a ten-year friend of Amber Heard, who describes herself as a self-love empowerment coach. I'm a mentor, coach, and spiritual teacher. I offer a perspective where everything is viewed through the lens of love and life. And it's happening for you. Also, kind of like how Johnny Depp empowered you with a perspective and point of view that can only be viewed from the balcony of his multi-million-dollar penthouse for free. Do it, ba. She is kind of cute, though. Let's hear what she's got to say. I didn't witness firsthand Johnny abusing Amber, but do you recall testifying to that effect? That Johnny charged at you and that you were scared. He charged towards me. And I was scared. I ran past him. You didn't run past him because he told everyone in that penthouse to get out of his penthouse. I ran past him for t because he was because he ran into the unit, and it scared the shit out of me because he was wasted and screaming. Word, that's your story. Even you were fumbling to get it right. And props to my girl Camille for taking her to the task on that bullshit she was spitting. Now our next witness is Raquel Rocky Pennington, who testifies that she actually walked in on the alleged abuse of Amber Heard and pay close attention to how she prepares herself to give her testimony. I want to talk about um, the events of.、Um, May twenty first, twenty sixteen. Do you remember that night, Miss Pennington? Yes. <sighs> she was just, she was calling for help, and that had never happened before. Saying help, help me. I went and I、uh, cut through the. Space between the coffee table and the sofa, and I went up to him, and he was yelling and yelling, and I just I put my hands up on his chest and I was like, stop, just stop, just trying to calm him down. He hit my hands away, and so I just went straight over to Amber. She sat down on the couch. She was crying, and I just put my body over her, and he came. A little bit closer to us, and he was yelling at her to like get up, or I don't know, quit crying, or get up, or something. And it was really loud, and he was getting closer and closer. And there was this、um, like big orange ceramic ashtray on the coffee table, and I was thinking, <laughs> if he gets any closer, I'm just gonna pick up that ashtray and like hit him with it because he was so close over us. Why did you get between? And and put your hands on Mr. Depp and get between him and and Miss Heard. I just thought I could calm him down. When he hit your hands away and then you went and and laid on her, why did you do that? It's just the thing to do. Wow. Maybe Amber Heard should take a couple acting lessons from her. She really sold it on that one. Whack. Now take note. She was also living in the penthouse for free along with her ex-husband and two of Amber Heard's friends. So maybe she's got a bit of conflict of interest. Now this next testimony is my favorite because this woman, who was an ex-night、uh, friend of Johnny Depp almost 30 years ago, 
seems to not give a fuck what anyone thinks. Several days before she testified, several media outlets reported that she would bring the hammer down on Johnny Depp for his alleged abuse against her and throwing a wine bottle at her head. Let's hear what she actually had to say. At that point in 1994, when the relationship turned romantic, uh, you're not- change that to sexual? Sexual. Thank you. For how long did your relationship with uh, Mr. Depp remain sexual? Several months. Anywhere between three and five, six. And during that period, how often would you see Mr. Depp? That period when it was sexual? I'd say I'd see him three or four times a week. Did there come a time, Ms. Barkin, when uh, Mr. Depp um, acted in a way that was out of control with you? Yes. Mr. Depp threw a wine bottle across the room, the hotel room, on one instance in Las Vegas while we were shooting Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Were you, was something about to happen? A fight was going on. Between you and Mr. Depp? No. Who was the fight between? Between Johnny Depp and his friends in the room, the assistant. Honestly, I don't remember. Ms. Barker, was it your understanding back then that he was throwing the bottle at you? I don't know why he threw the bottle. And was it, when he threw it, was it in your direction? Yes. Were there other people standing around you? Yes. So he threw it in your direction at a, at a group of people? Yes. He's just a jealous man, controlling where are you going, who are you going with, what, what did you do last night? I had a scratch on my back once that got him very, very angry because he insisted it came from me having sex with a person who wasn't him. If you ask me, it sounds like she actually vindicated Johnny Depp. The only thing that she confirmed was that their relationship, if you can call it that, was short and that Johnny Depp, just like everyone else says, has an alcohol and drug problem. But one problem he doesn't have is hitting women. Now, this final testimony comes from the ex-husband of Raquel Pennington, and he was also living in Johnny Depp's penthouse for free. He shed some light on the Pootgate incident and also calls into question Amber's intentions for getting him to testify. From the time that you first met Mr. Depp on movie night until this very moment sitting here today, have you ever seen Mr. Depp strike Amber Heard? No. Have you ever seen him throw a telephone at her? No. Have you ever seen him hit her with a fist? No. And Mr. Drew, you said that Ms. Heard reached out to you. When, was, when did she reach out to you? Sometime in the last two months. What did she say when she reached out to you? Paraphrase, it was something akin to letting me know that, you know, her and Raquel were, hadn't spoken in some time and to tell me that she loved me and that she missed me and she just wanted to make amends and, you know, reconnect. Did she mention anything about this lawsuit? Not in the initial interaction. Um, how did you respond to her in this initial interaction when she said she wanted to make amends? I didn't for some time. I think I waited about a week and a half before I responded and before I could, I did get uh, a note from her letting me know that she had tried to keep me out of it but more than likely people were going to be contacting me um, either about being deposed or a <coughs> statement of some kind. Um, there was nothing explicit about whom it would be coming from, whether it was from Johnny's side or from her side, only that somebody would more than likely be reaching out to me. Do you recall approximately when you had a glass of wine with her? Probably about two months ago. But you've never seen Johnny hit Amber? That's correct, and I've affirmed it to everybody that I've spoken to. I've been explicit about that. And you've never seen Johnny hit any woman? Correct. You testified that the dogs were too small to climb the stairs. Correct. correct. And if the dogs, in fact, were too small to climb the stairs, how would they be able to jump on the bed? One of them was. One of them was not. So it's your testimony that one of the dogs could had the ability to climb the stairs and jump on the bed, and the other had neither. Correct. Now, to me, this guy seems like a pretty straight shooter so far. There was one part of his testimony that was cut out of the deposition, and it's possible because it's hearsay, but let me tell you, it backs up Johnny Depp and a lot of the rumors that have been going around since this trial began. Did you ever notice anyone visiting Amber Heard at night while Mr. Depp was away? During the time that I was living there? Yes. Yes. On how many occasions? I wouldn't even be able to estimate. Was it more than 10? Yes. Was it more than 20? Yes. Was it more than 30? Yes. Was it more than 50? Again, I, I, I can't really speculate. 
I was there for quite some time. Who was Elon Musk? Elon Musk was a gentleman that Amber dated intermittently following the restraining order. When did you first see Elon Musk at Penthouse 3? Again, I'm, I'm not quite clear exactly, but I want to say it was about three to four weeks after um, the restraining order was filed. But while Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard were still married, correct? Yes. Did Rocky tell you that Amber Heard was having an affair with Cara Delavigne while she was still married to Johnny Depp? Yes. Did she ever tell you that the three of them, Elon Musk, Cara Delavigne, spent the night with Amber in November of 2016? To the specific date, I can't say. Did she ever tell you in words or substance while Amber was still married to Johnny Depp that the three of them, um, Amber Heard, Elon Musk, and Cara Delevingne spent the night together? Yes. So they were having what a three-way affair, correct? My understanding, yes. Well, there you have it, Amber's so-called witnesses. Now, it is kind of unfortunate that none of them were able to appear in court where they could suffer cross-examination from Camille Vasquez. Correct, correct. But none of these witnesses will compare to the one that Johnny Depp may have prepared to testify next week. Enter in Jennifer Howell, the former employer of Amber Heard's sister, who shortly after Johnny Depp lost his defamation suit in the UK, made a court declaration, which is pretty much the equivalent of testifying on paper, that not only was Whitney Enriquez lying for her sister, but that it was Amber who abused Whitney and Johnny Depp the night before Amber filed the restraining order against him. So it seems like things could heat up next week in the final battle for Johnny Depp's reputation and his legacy. Now we'll be taking a break until the trial resumes on Monday morning and you can be damn sure we'll be on it come Tuesday night. So until then, remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace!